First question is from Coach Carruthers. Would it be beneficial to train purely unilateral for a phase or two to combat imbalances and increase overall strength? Yes. Yeah. Love Great it. approach. A hundred percent. I I am right now in the middle of my longest cycle of doing that for my lower body. So I I love squatting, love deadlifting. I did them for years, got pretty good at both of them, especially the deadlift. And I started noticing that I just I had an imbalance between the two sides and it became glaring when I would do weighted uh, Bulgarian split stance squats squats or lunges. Mm -hmm. And it, it was glaring in the sense that it just felt different. Like my left foot, when that was forward, felt different than when, when my right foot was forward. So I said to myself, I'm not going to squat at all until I feel super strong with uh, lunges and Bulgarian uh, split stance squats. And so I'm probably three or four months into just doing that. And I'll tell you what, the, the leg development <sighs> is good. But what's better is my stability. Mm -hmm. I feel so much more balanced, and I know when I go back to squatting, I'm going to feel uh, that much stronger because of it. Oh, absolutely. It's going to make you stronger. I, I know it's the same thing, uh, and it, it happens so gradually. Mm -hmm. You know, like my my hips started to just barely rotate, like ever so, you know, little, little by little. It, it became an exaggerated thing to where then, you know, in the middle of the night, like I would get pains and things shooting down my leg. And, and you know, to it, now I've learned to address it a little bit earlier and start, you know, doing more unilateral training because it does. It, it provides so much more stability around my hips. So that way, when I'm doing these bilateral movements, everything's like working together simultaneously. You are able to produce more force to be, it makes you stronger. So I was making a case for this a couple of years ago on here when we were talking about Bulgarian split squats and what a game changer it was for me and my squat. It was when I was going through the whole mobility stuff, I did the same thing as Sal was, I, I kind of stopped uh, squatting with both feet and started doing split, split squats. And it was a it was a game changer for me. And I think this is true even if you don't have a discrepancy and imbalances, right? So if you even if you have uh, you know good symmetry and you're not off, I still think there's a lot of value in unilateral training. Period, right? So doing one leg, one arm uh, at a time. So I think everybody should face at least uh, at least annually, if not you know every every couple months, throw in some training uh, training blocks that are primarily unilateral. So. I find value in that for anybody, even if you're not. And if for sure, if you have imbalances going on, I think there's a ton of value. Yeah, and you, you're, you're, I think people will fear that they're going to lose muscle no, and lose strength. Not at all. No, and you know, there's this, there's this phenomenon that happens with resistance training that um, I identified a long time ago, and every once in a while, I take advantage of it. And that's when you do a new exercise, you're not nearly as strong as you are when you do exercises you're very familiar to. Now, why is this a good thing? Because the potential for progress is massive. Like when I do, a, a, you know, when I'm doing squats with 315 and I feel comfortable doing that and I haven't done lunges in forever and then I get underneath a 105 pound barbell and do lunges, my legs are getting real fatigued because it's a new skill. That means as I'm learning, as my body's getting used to it, my progress from, and that lunge is going to go from 105 to 225 in a relatively short period of time, I'm not going to get that with my squat because mm -hmm. I've, I'm, I've, I'm kind of tapping the ceiling with my squat, so to speak, or at least I'm closer to it. So that potential for growth is there. And what ends up happening when you add 50, 60 pounds to an exercise as you get better at it is you just – your body responds. You get exceptional uh, results. Now, one of the best ways to apply this, by the way, and this is something that you know Adam communicated a long time ago and I thought was brilliant – is make sure you start with your weaker side and use that, let that dictate how much weight and reps you do throughout the workout. Uh, because what you don't want to do is you don't want to start with your strong side and then maintain the discrepancy between the two. So let's, let's give you an example. Let's say I'm doing, uh, let's say I'm doing a Bulgarian split stance squat, and I notice my left leg is much weaker, and I can hold 30 pound dumbbells and only do eight reps with my left leg, but with my right leg I can do 12 reps. I'm only going to do eight. I'm going to stick to what my weaker side can do and allow that to catch up. I'm not going to do eight on my left and 12 on my right and just keep, have them both grow, but continue to maintain the, you know, the discrepancy between the two. Allow the weaker side to, to dictate the weight and the reps and then watch what happens and start with the weak side. Start with it in the beginning of your workout. You know, studies show that how you prioritize your exercises, you know, the exercise you do first in your workout tend to get the most gains. 
start with the weak side and allow that to happen and watch what happens. And, you, and now visually, what does this look like? Visually, you start to develop more balance in your body. Your pecs match better. Your lats start to look like they match better. Your shoulders, your your legs. Then when you go back to your uh, your compound movements, we're using a barbell and two arms and two legs. All of a sudden, like when you jump back, you just feel solid. Yeah, you yeah. feel way more solid and way more stable. Um, and then that allows you because here's the other thing you want to consider. Oftentimes, what's holding you back from progressing is the weakest link in whatever it is in your body. Right. Your body will not allow you to progress past the weakest point. So if the discrepancy between, for example, your right and left leg is big, that may be what's keeping your squat at whatever weight. Well, and I think, too, like that's the problem is, is you're thinking about how much weight you're actually moving. And, and people get, get fixated on that, but they don't realize this. You're getting novelty gains. You're getting these gains that are actually like you know, building more support. So that way, when you go back to these other lifts that you're doing, it, it's going to feel more secure, more stable. Like you're going to be able to allow your, your body's going to be able to allow to, to, to produce more force to, to get stronger. So it's a lot of times it's the missing piece to, to getting past your, your plateau. Oh, totally. Uh, single leg deadlifts, another phenomenal exercise. It's an exercise that if you're stuck with your deadlifts, I tell you what, if your numbers on your deadlifts are stuck, try doing single leg deadlifts for, you know, I don't know, three, four weeks. Go back to your traditional deadlift That's and watch gnarly. what happens. Yep.